Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I'm Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. This is going to be a video for Ryan W. Who the hell is Ryan W., you ask? Well, Ryan W. is one of our loyal viewers and subscribers out in Colorado. Thank you, Ryan. He was kind enough to send me a link to this. What is this? This is Colorado's new assault weapon ban, or what is now being called as House Bill 24-1292. And it's a doozy. I've had an opportunity to geek out on all of it. I am abundantly familiar with how assault weapon bans work and how they get implemented because we had one of these shoved down our throat just last year. So Colorado, it's time that you might have to join the club so maybe we can all start getting a support group together so you can help manage the emotional trauma that you're about to go through. But a piece of advice, you might want to start stocking up right now. So today, let's get you all educated and let's talk about Meet Colorado's new assault weapon ban and why you better stock up now. Okay, what are we talking about today? We're talking about House Bill 24-1292, sent to me by one of our loyal viewers, Ryan W. out there in Colorado. Ryan, thanks again. Uh, he did send me this. It's beginning to get a little hubbub on social media right now. Where everyone's talking about this. This is a bill that, if passed into legislation, would ban assault weapons in the state of Colorado. Now, when I say assault weapons, I know that many of you are completely freaking out right now because I'm using that term. And yes, I understand that that is a fictional term. It is, however, a term that's being used here in your statute. So as I talk about what's in your statute today, I will, in fact, be using that term. And if you sit there and go, no, 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 they're modern sporting rifles, they're semi-automatic rifles, well, you might want to check out the bill yourself because if you think it's only rifles that's going to be banned by this legislation, you are sadly mistaken. Now, there are really three ways that assault weapon bans are drafted, okay? And just so you know, Colorado, your legislation's been cut and pasted from another couple of states, so there's not a single original thought here that's going on by your legislators here. But what these bans will do is they will either ban the firearms based upon just their make and model, okay? Who makes them and what model is it? So just a named ban. Number two, what we call the single feature ban. And number three, what we call the internal workings ban, okay? The internal workings ban is something that you're seeing in the Go Safe Act on the federal level and something that the state of New Mexico thinks is a really good idea. You have selected what I like to call the California model slash Washington model, which is you've implemented the other two. You've implemented a named firearm ban, that is certain makes and models automatically are banned, and then you have also implemented a single feature ban. And I'm gonna to explain to you how both of those work, and then I'm gonna to explain to you how this goes way, way beyond semi-automatic rifles. It goes into a lot of other platforms of firearms. Now, just to give you an idea of what this bill does, because in addition to banning all sorts of firearms, it also bans all of your force reset triggers, wide open triggers, and everything like that. But this is what the legislative intent states. The bill defines the term assault weapon and prohibits a person from manufacturing, importing, purchasing, selling, offering to sell, or transferring ownership of an assault weapon. The bill further prohibits a person from possessing a rapid fire trigger activator. A person in violation of the prohibitions will be assessed a first time penalty of $250,000 and $500,000 for each subsequent violation. Damn. That is crazy. I mean, throw some jail time out. I see that a lot, but a quarter million dollars in fines? Man, Colorado, you guys don't mess around here. Okay, so like we say, we have the named firearm ban, which basically includes this laundry list of every type of conceivable firearm that you could think AR-15 in all formats, AK-47 in all formats. And you can see as I'm stalling out here, the long, long list that your state legislature is proposing. In addition to that though, if your firearm just happens to not be on the list and you think, oh, I've dodged the bullet here, wrong. Because there is also what's called the single feature test. How does the single feature test work? Well, it basically defines a platform of firearm. And then it says, if it has any one of these additional features, it's a banned weapon. And of course, all of the features are things that we absolutely positively expect to find on that weapon. A semi-automatic rifle that has the capacity to accept a detachable magazine or that may be readily modified to accept a detachable magazine and has one or more of the following characteristics. 
Okay, so a center fire semi-automatic rifle that accepts a detachable magazine and it has any one of these following characteristics, and they include A, a pistol grip or thumb hole stock, B, any feature capable of functioning as a protruding grip that can be held by the non-trigger hand. C, a folding, telescoping, or detachable stock that is otherwise foldable or adjustable in a manner that operates to reduce the length, size, or any other dimension or otherwise enhances the ability to conceal the weapon. D, a muzzle brake. E, a functional grenade launcher or flare launcher. F, a shroud attached to the barrel or that partially or completely encircles the barrel, allowing the bearer to hold the firearm with the non-trigger hand without being burned, but excluding a slide that encloses the barrel, or G, a threaded barrel. Okay, so listen, if you have anything in the AR platform with a muzzle brake on it, that of course would be a banned weapon. But I also mentioned that, hey, there's a lot more than just semi-automatic rifles, and that's true. Let's talk about some semi-automatic pistols that will also be banned under this legislation because the definitional section says that those include a semi-automatic pistol that has the capacity to accept a detachable magazine or that may be readily modified to accept a detachable magazine if the semi-automatic pistol has one or more of the following features. Okay, so this is a semi-automatic pistol that accepts a detachable magazine and unlike in some states, where it accepts a detachable magazine at some place other than the handle or grip, this one says if it just accepts a detachable magazine anywhere, and then if it has any one of these following features, you now have a banned assault weapon. A, a threaded barrel. B, a second pistol grip or additional feature capable of functioning as a protruding grip that can be held by the non-trigger hand. C, a shroud that is attached to the barrel or that partially or completely encircles the barrel, allowing the bearer to hold the firearm with the non-trigger hand without being burned, but excluding a slide that encloses the barrel. D, a muzzle brake. E, the capacity to accept a detachable ammunition feeding device at some location outside of the pistol grip, or F, a buffer tube, arm brace, or other part that protrudes horizontally behind the pistol grip. All right, so all of your AR pistols go out the window, all your AK pistols go out the window, but you know what else goes out the window is any regular semi-automatic handgun with a threaded barrel. Hmm. Now, I also said that there would be shotguns included in this legislation, and there is, because the definitional section there describes a scary assault weapon, which is a shotgun, as follows. A semi-automatic shotgun that has one or more of the following features. Okay, you got it, semi-automatic shotgun any one of the following features. A, a pistol grip. B, any feature capable of functioning as a protruding grip that can be held by the non-trigger hand. C, a folding, telescoping, or thumb hole stock. D, a functional grenade launcher or flare launcher. E, a fixed large capacity magazine as defined in section 18-12-301, or F, the capacity to accept a detachable magazine. Okay, and then Finally, this legislation would also ban any sort of device that increases the rate of fire for a shooter. For example, the force reset trigger, the wide open trigger, and some of the other th devices that we've seen like that. The definitional section, just so you understand if you're in possession of one of these things or thinking about coming into possession of one of these, reads as follows. Except as otherwise provided in subsection two of this section, a person shall not knowingly possess a rapid fire trigger activator. And then if you take a look at the definitional section in the bill here, they have come up with just about every possible conceivable device and description thereof that would increase the rate of fire. So again, your FRTs, your wide open triggers, bump stocks, you name it, anything that is exponentially increasing the rate of fire would now be illegal under this bill if it were to become law. Now, here's the real kicker here, okay? What exactly is going to be unlawful, right? Does this mean you have to give up all of these firearms if you are in fact in possession of them? No, you do not yet, but that time is coming and it's identifiable. And this is one of the nuances that I see in the Colorado legislation that I did not see in the Washington legislation. The legislation would make the following prohibited or criminal activity. Except as otherwise provided in subsection two of this section, a person shall not knowingly manufacture, import, purchase, sell, offer to sell, or transfer ownership of, or knowingly cause the manufacture, importation, purchase, sale, offer of sale, or transfer of ownership of an assault weapon. 
Now the manufacture, importation, sale, offering for sale is very, very common what we see. You notice the word that's missing here is possess. And that is how the grandfathering clause would work in Colorado. Under this bill, possession would not be unlawful so long as it was grandfathered in. The ability to purchase moving forward once this bill becomes law though, would be legally impossible in the state of Colorado. But here is the thing that really kind of jumped out at me. It's this little section right here, or transfer ownership of, which means that while you may be able to lawfully possess these firearms, you cannot transfer them to anybody. You cannot transfer them to your children. And oh, by the way, when you die, there will be no ability to transfer them there. So this is an unconstitutional taking of these weapons. It's just an unconstitutional taking that occurs at the end of the generation that owns them. Okay, and then finally, Colorado, we gotta talk about what is the likelihood that this legislation actually becomes realistic? Well, in the Senate right now, the Democrats outnumber the Republicans 23 to 12, and in the House, this is brutal, uh, they actually outnumber the Republicans 46 to 19. So the math is horribly, horribly stacked in favor of this legislation making it out of both houses and making it to your governor's desk. I will tell you the exact same thing that I was telling folks in Washington State just last year about this exact time. The time to start stocking up may be and is likely right now. Listen, we'll go ahead and link up the bill down below so that you guys can geek out on it for yourself. If you got any other questions about this or anything else related to what's left of our Second Amendment rights, you guys should know how to get a hold of Washington Gun Law by now. If you don't, that's okay. That information is also down there in the description box. And then finally, let's remember that part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here, is to know what the law is in every situation, how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Thanks again to Ryan W. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Stay safe.